So in this video I figured I would talk a little bit about um, the construction of my coffee roaster. Uh, this is a modification I'd say on the uh, stir crazy turbo oven model. I had some issues with uneven roasts basically because I couldn't get a good um, way to agitate my beans that that wasn't causing an uneven roast so eventually I decided I would give up on, on getting a good agitator and I decided to construct a different base basically a drum base that the turbo oven will sit on top of like so um, you can see the thermocouple here which just sort of hangs in the ambient air near the drum uh, and I found this um, canning pot at a thrift store. I found an ice cream maker at the thrift store, which I quickly repurposed the, uh, the stirring mechanism for a low RPM high torque motor for stirring the beans. Um, and uh, this roaster, actually, I had originally intended on getting a replacement drum for the Baymore, which uh, holds about a pound of coffee at the time, but uh, none of the places I found had it in stock. So I wound up going with this drum that actually I found on eBay. Um, it doesn't quite hold a pound, uh, but it does 14 ounces comfortably. I got a really even roast with 14 ounces of beans. So there is 14 ounces of beans in there. There is an agitator fin on the bottom. You can't see it. The beans are completely covering it right now. Uh, one of the benefits of uh, this drum in particular is, well, one, it was pretty cheap. It was about $30. Uh, I found it on eBay. Um, the uh, It opens to the side here, which means that I don't actually have to remove the drum from the canning pot base in order to get the beans out. Uh, and the shaft... Um, it was designed actually to take uh, a quarter inch uh, bar stock, um, but I decided to use a quarter inch threaded rod um, for my, at least for this prototype design. I might switch to a square bar stock in the future. But right now the threaded rod allowed me to do some um, conveniences with attaching the, uh, the motor to the, to the drive shaft. This is basically just a, um, socket wrench adapter on a screw with a quarter inch coupling nut. Um, then I have a couple lock nuts here and here and then some more coupling nuts inside that I'm using as spacers. Uh, the drum comes with actually because it's supposed to be using a quarter inch bar stock it comes with uh, basically a, a fin there that you can put a screw in there to, to anchor it to the to the bar stock. Um, one thing I did have to do during my trial runs um, was Dremel away the threading right on the, the joints where it goes through the, the canning pot. Um, that, that allows it to spin a lot more smoothly before it was, it was catching a lot on the, um, on the threads. So I dremeled away the threads. Now there are two nice, uh, smooth places to, to rotate on. So one, one thing when, I guess, particularity with the, this, ice cream maker guy right now is you never know which direction it's going to spin and because this is threaded I really need it to spin this way so sometimes I have to turn it on and off a couple times to get it to spin the right direction uh, but I got lucky on this first one so it's my nice my homemade stand here it actually works pretty decently um, and so there we go you can actually kind of see the fin there hmm. So I'm not really sure how long the ice cream motor is, is going to last. I might have to wind up replacing it with something else. I could replace it right now with a variable speed drill. This is just really a drill adapter that I, I jammed into the into the motor there. Um, yeah, but I noticed this guy hitches every once in a while. It really didn't affect the roast when I did the when I did the roast. It still came out much more even than anything I'd gotten from the uh, stir crazy base. Um, but yeah, I'm going to look at that and, and come up with something a little bit more 
smoothly turning. I mean, for now, it, it's completely functional. It works fine. Actually, you can kind of you can see the the fin in there now where where it stopped. Um, and so yeah, basically, I just turn that on. I let it go. Uh, put the uh, turbo oven roaster on. Right. I have it set to its its highest setting. When I was when I had the stir crazy base, I actually had it around 440, and I had to slowly lower it as the is the roast went on here I, I can keep it at 550 and and, and it, or 500 well 480 480 and, and and let it go um without any without any issues and uh nice thing about the drum is the chaff just sort of all falls to the bottom of the canning pot the canning pot collects it all pretty nicely and uh, i just leave it stirring when i'm done i pull the, i pull the top off um I let this continue stirring, and then uh, either I use a basically a leaf blower to quickly cool down the beans while this thing is spinning, or the other day when I was roasting at night, actually I just held a box fan over it um, in order not to disturb the neighbors. So um, that is it so far. I'll uh, add a video here of a roast in action, and then um, show the post results. Thank you. All right, so we're about. Ten and a half minutes in, and uh, as you can see, they are yellowing now. It's a little bit slower than I had expected. Um, I might want to experiment next time with preheating the chamber and then putting the beans in. I'm not sure how that's going to work, uh, but I was expecting them to be at this stage about three minutes ago. Um, it just took a while because there's so much air and uh, the canning pot, it just took a while to heat up. So maybe my maybe my pot's too big, um, or maybe this could benefit from uh, a bit of a reheat. Anyway, as you can see, I, I, fixed, I fixed the hitch uh, earlier, um, so it's, it's no longer doing that weird stopping thing that it was doing before. It's a nice, smooth uh, drum rotation. All right, so uh, we'll check up on it again in a few minutes and see if we've made it past first crack yet. I think we're gonna call that done. It was about 22 minutes or so. It's a little bit longer than I wanted. Um, so, but anyway, this is only my second ever roast with this guy, so we'll figure out what we're gonna do with her next time. <laughs>